How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine. This is part 27, cladding the steam cylinder. Before I can start this job, I need to cut some metal, and I'm going to use my small bandsaw. This is a really ancient machine. It's a very old Burgess bandsaw, and it's a lovely machine. It's really, really well made, and I'm giving it a much needed vacuuming. The original plan for today's video was to run a steam engine in the garden. But today's weather is less than perfect, so I think I'll give that a miss and wait until the weather picks up a little bit. So instead, I thought I would make some new cladding for the Stuart 5A. The original cladding from this engine is a very badly made piece of bent steel. And I'm using this as a template on top of this brass that I bought from Blackgates Engineering when I went up there last week. I much prefer to use brass sheet for cladding because it doesn't rust. And the first job is to mark the piece of brass to the correct length and then cut it on the bandsaw. The new blade in the Burgess bandsaw makes short work of cutting this piece of brass sheet. I find this size of bandsaw to be very useful in the workshop. I do have another one that you've possibly seen on other videos which is a half inch wide blade and it's a dedicated metal cutting bandsaw. So now I have a piece of brass exactly the same size as the piece of original cladding. So it's a simple job to mark through the holes, but some of these holes are a bit wrong. I'm making minor adjustments to make the whole thing a bit neater. Once I've marked the position of the bolt holes, the first part I'm going to cut out is the part that fits around the exhaust manifold. And I'm being very careful not to cut this oversize. The good thing about this bandsaw is it works a little bit like a jigsaw. You can go around quite a tight radius with it because the bandsaw blade is only a quarter of an inch from front to back. In this clip I'm using my small Minicraft drill, once again with a drum sander in it, to clean up the inside edge of the cutout. I think of all the workshop tools that I have, this one gets the most use. I have quite a big box full of these small drum sanders and periodically I do change the actual sandpaper part of them, but I always keep plenty of them in the box, set up and ready to use. The first operation is a success, the cutout looks good. It's a much better shape than on the previous piece of cladding, but it doesn't fit around the exhaust manifold. That's easily rectified, it's because the exhaust manifold is the wrong shape. So I'm going to remove the exhaust manifold, re-trim it to the correct shape and refit it. The original holes for the cylinder drain cocks in the side of the cylinder were absolutely massive. They were three eighths of an inch in diameter. That's why the cladding is such a mess. In the latter part of episode 26, I made some adapters to convert the size of these holes from three eighths by 26 threads per inch to a quarter by 32 threads per inch. So all I have to do now is screw the old cladding temporarily in place and hold it firmly against the side of the cylinder and I can clearly see the size of the holes in the masking tape. I'm using a felt tip pen to make marks where the holes need to be, and this also softens the masking tape, then it's a very easy job to just push the masking tape through with a centre punch. And once again, by using my trusty felt tip pen, I can transfer the position and size of the holes through onto the brass sheet below. I'm making certain that the original piece of cladding doesn't move while I'm doing this because I need these holes to be in a very accurate position. I will get a second chance at this. As we go through the process, you'll see how I do it. And it's over to the drilling machine now to first of all use a centre drill to spot these holes in exactly the right position. You have to be very careful when you hold pieces of metal in your fingers when you're drilling them. The leverage on this piece of sheet is such that with a small drill it's not an issue, but the minute that I go up to a quarter inch drill, which could grab the work, I make sure I have several layers of cloth wrapped around the sheet metal. I would like to say that over the years I've been lucky, but that is not the case. Over the years I've been very careful. Another thing that I do regarding health and safety is I always make sure that the belt on the drilling machine is not too tight. That way, if the drill does grab, the belt will slip. And it's worked well for me over the years. I still have at least eight and a half of my fingers left. I try and look after my hands. I can't say I manicure them very often, 
it's a bit pointless when you've been machining cast iron, but I always try to look after them in as much as not smash them to pieces. It's time now to bend this piece of cladding so that it fits around the cylinder, and for that I'm using my bending rollers. I bought these years ago, and they've never been particularly brilliant. In fact, the cogs kept coming off the end. A friend of mine just welded the ends of them, and they don't come off anymore. But I can't complain about them. They work very well, and they bend the pieces of metal. It's quite important, though, to make sure you bend these pieces of metal the correct way round. That's why I wrote inside on the piece of metal, so that I knew that that wanted to be the inside part. It's surprisingly easy to get momentarily confused and actually bend the cladding the wrong way. That's why I write inside on the inside. It stops me from doing it. The two outer edges of this piece of cladding where the small holes are needs bending. And I did this by holding the edges of the piece of cladding between two pieces of wood in the vise and bending it slightly by hand. And here you can see the finished effect. I'm temporarily fitting the cladding to the cylinder just to make sure everything fits. And everything seems okay, apart from the position of the drain cocks, and I knew this was going to be a slight problem. But it's very easily rectified. I used a selection of small files, this one being the largest, and I'm also using a small round needle file as well. And with the combination of these two files, in no time at all, the hole is big enough to allow the drum sander in. Then you can really start moving, and you can get a really good finish. You can enlarge the hole, it looks perfectly round, and this cladding's starting to look pretty good now. The four mounting holes fit, it's a good fit around the manifold, and the drain cocks are perfect. But I cannot tell a lie, I made it twice. This was the first attempt, and I wasn't happy with it. The ends looked wrong. The second run was a bit better, and really, if I want to be picky, I can get it better than this. But, looking at the old one, I think I may live with this one. When it's painted black, it will be okay. I'm just going to screw up the old one and throw it as far away as I possibly can. And that's about it for this episode. So thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.